Oh, it's a good little article, right? Um, that I saw actually on High Snobiety. Um, who a study finds a study because you know study, people always like studies. Oh, do they like studies now? They don't really because these studies usually point out the most obvious of things that we all kind of knew. But this is an article I found on High Snobiety that I thought was of interest. It says a study finds artists become more famous because of who they know, not their work. <sighs> Are you surprised? I'm not surprised, motherfucker. Um, again, let's read a bit of it before we kind of dive on deep and start to my, form my own opinion. Um, zoom in here, gets on screen. High snobiety is up on your screen. You can see that, right? Yep, there you go. A new study has found that uh, becoming a successful artist is more about who you know um, than how creative or original your art is, which, you know, I think we can all kind of agree. Published by Columbia Business School and reported by um, Artsy, the research paper, The Art of Fame Maps the Social Networks of the Early 20th Century. Abstract artists like Pablo Picasso, Paul Klee, um, Wesley Kaczynski, which I studied when I was in school, it found that um, artist um, networks were more likely the reason that they were succeeded professionally. Um, contrary to prof um, conventional literature, there was no statistical support for a relationship between an artist's creativity and the fame that they ultimately achieved. Um, those individuals who possessed a diverse set of personal friends and personal contracts from different industries, an artist um, in a cosmopolitan network uh, position was physically more likely to become friends. Oh, famous, sorry. The study took this date, um, this data from the MoMA 2012 exhibition Inventing Abstraction 1910 to 1925 to determine that a made um, what made a work original researchers got machine learning algorithms to rate how unique a piece of works compared to the range of artworks. In the 19th century, the study also had a group of art historians rank networks, artworks, sorry, based on the based, um, based on, based on original, fuck, again, so many places, right? You want to write for them, right? And then get this girl's face out of the way. I'm not taking piss out of her. But you want to write for these places, right? You send them emails like, hey, I can write for you guys. I've done write for in the past. They're like, nah, we're good. And then you see sentences like this. The study has also has also had a group of art historians rank artworks based on based on originality and innovation. Like, come on, man. I can do much better than that. But anyway, that that's neither here nor there. So this article, um I'm, I'm you know, I think we can all kind of say is fairly obvious. Um, I can kind of speak from my own personal purview that is very true. Speaking, coming from my DJing side of stuff, like before I was playing regularly in bars and clubs, I was sending emails and texts, no, well, emails mostly and Facebook messages out to any club you can mention, any promoter, any fucking bar manager you can mention under the sun and get absolutely no shine, right? No info, no, um, no kind of answer back, nothing, no interest, nothing, zero zelt, right? I was kind of just shouting into the wind which is fine, you know, everyone's got their own purview, I don't judge it, it's all good and good, you throw out a, you throw out a question, that doesn't always, you don't always, um, you should always expect a response, right, you're, you know, kind of disturbing somebody without them ask politely, without them asking you to get in touch, so I can understand cold emails and cold uh, messages can kind of get annoying, but the moment I got one thing is the moment all of the things started to roll into place, because they, it, it became a network, because the moment I started playing in one place, um, a manager that worked in that place then went somewhere else and they put me to that place and then somebody that was drinking in, in the other bar I was playing in then decided to hire me for another thing and then playing in that thing I mean it kind of it it did depend a lot on the people that I was playing in front of more so the, the, than what I was doing right so, like I'm in no um, I'm in no um, have have no illusions right like this is something that I'm very very much certain on right I'm up, I'm up there with as many like imagine the top tier in the middle tier wherever they are the scene DJs I'm up there with the best of them when it comes to the scene DJs right when it comes to the top tier guys self trucks all those kind of dudes they're on another stratosphere when it comes to the scene DJs who are doing their thing and touring around the world and playing in places and have their radio shows and stuff I'm as good as all these people right I'm fairly confident of that and I'm also very sure fairly sure that if I just if I was if I happen to get an opportunity to play on Boiler Room and happen to play in front of these kind of people, that that would automatically snowball my career and it would inevitably lead me to getting far more opportunities after that, right? And that isn't because of me thinking I'm good. It's more so to do with the people that I'm in front of. And that's something that was fairly evident to me in the beginning of my journey, right? I knew for sure, especially considering the fact that I was unwilling to kind of um, ask people to to play in places like I don't get me wrong the, before I said I contact clubs and bars and stuff to go play there but I was I, I didn't ask any of my promoter friends to play um even though a lot of these people I've had them play in my club nights right I've had them play in my club nights in Dawson not one of these people like kind of re returned the favor per se like none of them even if, even if they thought I was shit right just to just to kind of 
the exchange, the kind of courtesy of like, oh, you let you let me play at your night a few times. I heard you DJ, come play my night. Nah, never happened, right? Again, people are people are dickheads, right? It's all well and good. But again, I don't expect anything from anyone. So I'm not really judgmental in that regard. I don't really have any feelings towards it. But what was I saying at that point? But I was very aware that I was taking a big risk or I was going to suffer a lot of consequences because I wasn't willing to kind of put myself out there and ask these people, hey, I am, I let you play and kind of call a favour in again. I wasn't willing to do that. I wanted to go through it the kind of right way by contacting the bars and, and letting them play, play that way. But of course, those people have their own relationships, have their own networks that they trust and they don't want to get any new people in. And, they, and of course, they can't take a chance. They can't take a chance that I'm shit and they have to play for an hour in the club and they can't get rid of me, right? So I just completely understand that. But then... I think some people, especially on social media way, and especially on comments and stuff with some individuals, they get really annoyed when they see people make it and they feel as if like they're making it only because of the circle of friends that they have, right? The people I think of straight away is Brendan Shaw and the Virgil Abloh. Brendan Shaw in the podcast and Comedy Word and Virgil Abloh are probably good examples. Because people look at them from the outside and just think, oh, you're only there because of the people that you know, which is partially true, right? But they're also there because of how good they are. You have to marry those two things up. I don't think nowadays, especially in social media world, it's basically impossible. Uh, what would you say is impossible? It's kind of impossible to make it just on your own based solely on the work you do. You have to have somebody say, oh, that was awesome. Check this thing out, right? Or do something for somebody and then that person investigate. It doesn't mean it's a gatekeeper thing. It's just a, a, a matter of fact, right? It's just a matter of um, exposure and reference, right? So if I'm a, like that kid that, have you seen that recent thing that went viral of that kid that drew, a, that kid that did a drawing of um, Kevin Hart? Um, he made like an amazing realistic sketch of Kevin Hart, right? Some kid in Africa. That kid's been drawing for a long time, right? He's probably only he's probably only under 10 years old or some shit. He's not super old. But he's been drawing for a while, right? He's been around for a while, drawing loads of uh, sketches and doing loads of portraits. I'm going to be... I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's probably done a lot of other celebrity portraits. That probably isn't his first. But this one suddenly hit. Suddenly, Kevin Hart saw it, liked it, retweeted it, made a comment and said, hey, um, I want to commission you to do more work. And suddenly that kid's um, stuff is all over the social, all over the news outlets. Um, and he's quite, and I'm sure his life's going to change from this moment on. So again, that's an example of like, you just can't go by the work you do. You have to hope that the work you do see is, a, is get seen by the right person or the work, or you work in tandem with the right people. And then by standing next to them, you get exposed and people are like, oh, who is that guy in the red hat? And then that kind of goes on from there. Um, and again, I just don't know why suddenly on social media, it kind of, especially on social media where that's how it, it basically works, right? Social media works because people have that idea that they want to be associated with certain people, right? That's where, that's part of the reason why you're on this, exposing your work. You're wanting people to see it, share it, all that sort of malarkey. It's just weird how with those two people, especially with Virgil and Brendan Shaw, whenever you see a comment regarding them or something to do with them succeeding or going further in life, everyone's always saying, oh, they're only there because of Kanye or they're only there because of Joe Rogan. It's like, yeah, we know that, but they've got given the opportunity, right? They've got given the platform and they fucking run with it, right? There's some people that go on Joe Rogan's podcast as a guest and they're completely dog shit right they don't really rise to the occasion and it probably does them more harm than good right um there's people that go on there's people that get the opportunity to kind of work in tandem with virgil and they probably fuck it up right um it happens all the time but i think when you get given the chance and you're good it's not obviously a good it's good it's a good amplifying a good microphone for you to get your voice out and then for then it to you know resonate with the wider public and again, this pro this topic probably says it more often than not. And I guess with contemporary art, it's it's neither it's probably even more important than contemporary art, especially considering the galleries you need to represent you, the people you need to be around, the shows you need to rub against. Like it's it's a bait thing. Like it's just easy to fucking realize it. Um, again, I don't know why people don't think it's true or why they get annoyed by it because I think they have this idealistic mindset that people should be only getting forward in life by just the work. But nowadays, you have to be a you have to be an all in, right? You have to be an all encompassing uh, media your empire you have to be able to distribute you have to be able to make the arc you have to be able to distribute it market it like you have to do all that stuff and if you can just stand next to the right people and do great work by holding it up and stuff like you're gonna fucking smash it um that's basically the point of it right um again number one make sure you're actually good so when you get given the opportunity it comes your way you can fucking go and hit it out of the park that's what i'd say anyway again only in my opinion I'd, what do i know um